Welcome to Law Master's Lair. I am your Law Master, here to bring you a dangerous episode. Today, we'll be exposing the secrets of one who wishes to keep their secrets hidden. That's right. For our first look at the gods of the inner sea region, we'll be examining the god of greed, murder, poison, and most importantly of all, secrets. Nogaba. What kind of lore can one dig up about one who keeps even the most basic information about them a secret? Why don't we find out? First, let's start out with where one can find lore information about Norga Boy yourself. As a fan of gods, I like keeping track of all the little tidbits of information. Might as well share with all of you where to find it. First of all, it goes without saying that both 1E and 2E have gods and magic, the first place one would expect to have information about the gods. In addition, one common secondary source many gods have, and most of the main ones have already benefited from, are the adventure paths which give information on gods in their toolboxes, or whatever they feel like calling that section of the book that year. Um, <laughs> Nogaba was given his turn in Book 5 of Scald and Shackles. The Price of Infamy. Third, there was the Faith series of Pathfinder Companions with information on how to play the followers of certain gods or orders. Nogabo was, of course, part of the one on evil gods, Faiths of Corruption. I should mention that even though I have no specific plans to talk on it later, all you anti paladins out there will find here in this book ways to properly honor Nogabo as well as other dark deities. Another companion series, Anthology, has a book called Divine Anthology, a personal favorite of mine because of some more obscure facts about gods I would definitely be mentioning it later. Three times if I counted right. Finally, going back to core rule books, we have Planar Adventures, a book which covers all information about different planes, including the domains of the gods. This is where we will get information on Dark Phantom when we get to it. Either way, let you know where you can find the information to cross-reference. Let's see what I remember since the last time I bought these books. <laughs> um, so, what do we know about the Garden of Agabur? Long ago, the year 1893 AR, the only real number today, don't worry. <laughs> Nogabo was a thief of talent descent, and one of the best. He So, he decided to try to take the ultimate prize, the Star Stone. By this time, the fabled test was almost existed for two millennia, with all attempts failures. By then, many people must have considered the test impossible. However, Nogabo beat the odds and became the first person to successfully complete it successfully stealing godhood for himself. And honestly, that's pretty much all we know. With his ascension, Nogaba erased all memory of his time before godhood from everyone's memory, even the gods. Some even say that if certain hidden truths about him were to be discovered, his power would be undone. Therefore, his life before he became a god is only passed on to us through fractured tidbits that only someone digging deep could be able to find. Welcome to Lord Master's Lair, where we bring you today's first side tangent, the part of the show where we spread far and wide what Nogabo has kept hidden. Starting off today, let's discuss a city of high importance to Nogabo. Fire, the city of masks. Located in the northern Chalaxian region, and currently an independent city-state due to not joining with Ravunal, Vir is, not well known to outsiders, the home city of Nogaba, back when he was mortal. Because of this, it is one of the main centers of worship for him. The others being Absalom because of Stone and Talon because nationalism. Fear is a city of vice, where residents and visitors commit any immorality they can think of, often protecting their identities behind masks. 
hence the nickname of the city. It is known as being a city of smells as much as sights, with the combination of smoke, sea salt, various perfumes, the food of various restaurants and eateries, and I'm sure one or two other smells mixed in. Wink, wink, match, nudge. <laughs> the city is controlled by the kings and queens of Vaya, the mask, and the masks, the police who follow the orders. The king and queens are anonymous, and their title is given to those strong enough to take them. Their duties are each to enforce one of the five rules of a more city. I shall honor all coin. I shall speak many names. I may wound, but I shall not kill. I know none are below me, and I shall let, let closed doors remain closed. With just this brief information, it's clear to see that how, that how the city affected Norgabo when he was growing up. Next is the part of the show where we talk about a god, the appearance of a god. But we're already talking about a god. Uh, however, Norgabo is an exception. First, in terms of depiction, depiction art, he specifically does not appear as anyone. Our successful art of him appears as a fully cloaked invisible. Any other attempts, no matter how fanciful, result in the artist's hand going out of control until they stop the attempt to blast me, up to the point of causing permanent nerve damage. This happens to all art. To only do it to pieces that are close would give too many clues to the reality. When he does appear to his followers, it is a fully nondescript man in brown or gray, face fully or partially hidden, who sounds like he is whispering behind them, even when clearly standing, it, standing straight ahead. It will be no surprise when I tell you that the primary thing Novago holds dominion over is secrets. What he does, and what he expects his followers to do, is to collect and hold secrets. Few people know what Novago actually desires, most justly just a fraction of it, and we feel more than ready to wipe the knowledge from their heads as soon as they are no further use to him. In fact, when it comes to the other aspects of his godhood, Domino's greed because he holds clothes on secrets even tighter than the greediest miser holds on to gold, and poison and murder are simply the best methods he has found to ensure secrets stay secret. Everything about Nogaba starts and ends with secrets. Does not give does not give people like me much to work with, does it? <laughs> However, one thing we can look through to learn more about the god is as follows. The sons and daughters of the mask, as they are known, tend to follow Nogaba under one of his four titles, each one expressing a different focus of the cult, each one tending to wear a different mask as part of their religious regalia. In essence, these are four separate churches focused on a single god. First off, of those who follow, are, first off are those who follow the Reaper of Reputation. These are those who focus on Nogobo's dominion over hidden knowledge and follow him due to interest in what is hidden in the dark. This branch is mostly made up of parched and spies, and is the only branch that attracts non evil followers. However, many of these are the corrupt kind, and this aspect also includes sects like the Anaphexia, false monks who hold knowledge in the monastery library and work to keep others quiet. Assassins, they're assassins. <laughs> Either way, followers tend to show their devotion by wearing domino or masquerade masks and spiral mouth covers. The second fo follows Blackfinger who focuses on the domain over poison. Most of these are doctors, alchemists, and assassins. And as you would expect, not the good kind. They are the unethical scientists, vivisecting living beings to see, to learn as much as they can about the human body, making a contest of creating better poisons by using them on each other, and various other harmless experiments that lead them to believe outsiders are too soft, for their information. In addition, these groups tend to breed and raise poisonous animals as pets and stock for experiments. 
They tend to wear masks to smoke the glass, not only to hide their identities, but also to protect their faces from chemicals. Third is the most insidious of the cult, the followers, followers of Father Skinsaw. These are vicious serial killers known as Skinsaw men who consider every murder to be a prayer. And I do not mean just clean single knife stab. I mean heavily mutilated floor to ceiling bloodstains, happy happy gorga. <laughs> they also tend to be insane in some way or another. So, some so insane that their false civilian identities are more or less uh, their own people, to avoid the stark raving mad when the mask goes on. Speaking of masks, theirs are scarecrow-like masks made of human skin. However, their masks are also somehow enchanted to allow them to see the most vulnerable parts of the target. And finally, saving the most organized for last, the followers of the Green Master. This is the organized crime part of the faith, followers of the greatest thief in history. Of course, thieves are not all they are devilin. They have their hands in gambling, blackmail, extortion, prostitution, and selling of illegal materials, along with thievery and burglary. Yes, there's a difference between the two. Either way, these men are not your Robin Hoods. They take from the weakest and give to themselves. A big score is a challenge, nothing more. This group's distinct mask is either a brown or gray cloth covering the lower part of one's face. Before we move on, it should also be known that this branch is the most organized of faith, where, where it's not uncommon for a major temple of Nogaba to be masquerading as a common thieves guild. And the church functions the same way, clergy starting out as apprentices, moving up the ranks as one gives social credit within the organization. However, these are not all of Nogaba's followers, which leads us to the second tan side tan tangent, <laughs> to see the sons and daughters the Dawn does not approve of. We got information of both of these from the book, The Divine Anthology. First to mention is in the Majestic book. Ah. The first of this group is mentioned in the in universe book, Majestic Book of the Prime Ascended, a book written to celebrate the, those humans who have achieved the heights of godhood, including those who have overcome the trials of the star, star stone and gave lessons on how to take cues from them to live a better life. The chapter on Nogabo calls him the Prime Conspirator, and praises him as someone who keeps the secrets of it, who helps hide away secrets from the world, for the good of all. Yeah, many claims in the book are stretches. Well, the other four mentioned either hardly adapt, or at least try to take strides their sections of the book when introduced. The sons and daughters of the masks see the book as blasphemy at worst, the pocket full of best. It is a useful bit of advice for helping one hide secrets, however. Speaking of ap apocrypha, in the section dealing with such, it mentions those who get their interpretation of Nogaba from a book called The Dark Lure, and with it, the idea that the best way to hide is in plain sight, and the best way to hide secrets is giving out as much useless information as possible. They call themselves followers of the Reaper of rep Reputation aspect, but their companions call them scapegoats, people to be tolerated until somebody needs to take the fall. Now that we have the worship out of the way, let us go, go with Nogobo's Realm. Nogobo's Realm is where one would expect to find a neutral evil dawn of thieves. Axe is the perfect city. Not only that, the, the Dark Phantom is built directly below Octun, the capital of the perfect city and realm of the god of civilization. Part of this is because the perfect city believes that it is necessary evil. Without crime, there can be no law. I don't know about that myself, but that would explain why I lean chaotic. <laughs> Either way, trysts of catacombs and sewer tunnels lead to a metropolis-sized black market. The Dark Phantom contains the to all the evil aligned planes, 
allowing fiendish outsiders backdoor access to the perfect city to continue to, I guess, give law a reason to exist. Whatever allows Avatar to sleep at night, I guess. <laughs> now let's round out the information of a few miscellaneous facts about the legend. We briefly covered the three places where there is some official worship of Nogaba earlier, but truthfully, one can find a group of worshippers in the shadows of every major city in the inner sea region, especially those that seem the most perfect, or where science is especially golden. In addition, there are two holidays of order to Nogaba. The first is the celebration of, the, of, of his Ascension Day. It is a time for all the followers of Nogaba to plan, to scheme, whether alone or as a group, about upcoming heists or murders, or whatever focus under their god's eye it may entail. There is a truce among all followers, as this night all are united in Nogaba's plan. The other less savory holiday is disappearance. On a random night in midwinter, the church would snatch a random victim off the streets, douse them with poison, and torture them until the poison does its job. It then bury the body when no one finds it, and stalks the victim's friends and family for a few months, taking notes on the entire for, for the entire congregation of their sorrow and feelings of loss. Neutral evil. I also need to mention Nogaba's holy book, The Words Behind the Mask. This book is divided and hidden in 14 separate books, each appearance and name of the book changing by its owner, each encoded to ensure deniability. Because of this, interpretation of the group, interpretations of the books tend to vary from group to group. And speaking of holy books, <laughs> let's look at another one, shall we? However, let's call this one side tangent three. Dipping our heads back into the divine, the divine anthology one last time, we have divine fighting techniques. And with them, Nobugo's silent ship. Found up in the book, The Reaper's Hand, this is considered the most secretive of fighting styles devoted to the gods. It is said that to be the main fighting style of the skin summon, allowing them the ability to stalk around and dissect the targets while remaining unseen. That said, uh, don't tell anyone I told you. Spilling information about the book tends to get you a visit from Nogaba's Inquisition. Hope I'm still here for next week's episode. <laughs> Ending off, let's look at how well our Napoleon of Pride gets along with those around him. First, his herald is a giant scorpion known as a stabbing beast. It also has a human form, but still keeps a tail. It is a merciless killer who does not know death. Because, despite being one of the few heralds we ha have a record of dying, no one just wipes me memory of it each time. More convenient than that way. <laughs> Three other unique servants are Venom Fist, a poisonous water elemental, Yellowtooth, a rare rat rogue, and the secret shade, an undead shadow who is actually a rival of Nogaba in life. The two are rivals in the whole assassin thing, Nogaba is maybe also working well with kill steals. <laughs> but when he became the god of secrets, all of those who knew him personally had to go. So that's how the secret shade became one of Nogaba's first minions. As for gods, Nogaba tends to keep a neutral distance relationship with everyone. There are only six who truly do not get along with him. These are Adomade, Tarag, Aristotle, and Avatar, because they are lawful and they have seen what poisons Nogaba brings to their precious law. Plus, Adomade thinks Nogaba is behind Eridan's death, though she cannot prove it. Kaden Kaelin sees him as a villain a hero like he needs to stand against. And Seven Ray, despite believing anyone can be redeemed, has trusted Nogaba too many times to ever do so again. That all being said, 
This text still sends people to the state whenever they need something for the guy secrets, but are too proud to admit it. As for allies, he of course had a pretty good has a pretty good relationship with Ekakek, God of Assassins, especially in the aspect of Father Skinsaw. Two others, Sivana and Giona, also revel in the hidden and trickery. And, if and therefore the three have made a game out of trying to one-up the others. Nagaba being gracious when one of these ladies do get the best of him. However, if we're talking about Edogar's relationships with Nagaba, we cannot forget someone who is so enshrined with the King of Thieves that this, that this deserves to be our side tenant for. Good old Tamir Gix, the Silent Blade. Halfling God of Greed, Opportunity, and Thievery. Both Halfling Gods we know of are partners and shadows of another God, with Tamir being that of Nogaba. Their exact relationship is up to debate. Some say friend, some say master and slave, some even so go so far as mentioning lovers. <laughs> if that final one is true, it's definitely not kiss and tell of these ones. <laughs> Either way, these two have much in common, with one big difference is that Tamir is not big on secrets, except when it get, allows him to get close enough to stab. <laughs> but the similarities between bring about the question of which one came before the other. Many speculate Tamir was a companion of Nogabon in life, and for some reason the, the, the god decided to give his companion a pot portion of godhood to stop beside him. However, some more, um, let's say, adventurous speculators tell stories of a Tamir who existed before Nogaba, who assisted him on his path to godhood, and who chose to stand in deference to him after the tale improved himself. God knows these two aren't going to tell us. Some are little facts about Tamir. His last name changes to match that of the Patriarch of a City Absalom. This is apparent apparently enough that they are willing to rewrite historical documents whenever a new name is on the throne. Why this is is unknown. His realm is the back ally alleys, a realm of isolation and fog completely within Nogabo's own territory. No matter where you go in there, you always feel like you're being watched, so it is impossible to sleep. Finally, the followers of Tamir are almost all halflings, pay respect to Nogaba, though the opposite is really true. Tamir followers tend to be too stabby for the followers of the God of Secrets. Curiously, the followers of Tamir exclusively refer to Nogaba under the title Blackfingers. Also note, while we are on the topic, Nogaba does have a decent number of halfling followers himself to the point of having sales of cults that are completely happenings, though they tend to favor the Grey Master with the followers of Blade Fingers being second black Blade Fingers. Black Fingers <laughs> being close second. I'm talking too fast again. <laughs> and that is all the information Nogaba is still currently out in the open. Maybe the future will give us some juicy tidbits about his hidden life, but I'm already fearing acquisition of church coming to the silence me. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be back next week to cover whatever I'm going to be covering next. <laughs> I think I need to do a few more general videos not devoted to the world of Galarian, but important for world building. We'll have to see if anything else randomly inspires me. Yes, we have to see.